Hi guys, welcome to 2020 ASFN. Um, today I'm going to be doing a double hook raggy trace. It's a long distance casting trace. It's one that we clip uh, for wading purposes. It works extremely well. Um, it also prevents bite offs or back bites as they call it. Um, yeah, what we require for it, very simple. Uh, sinker clip, some of our uh, solid rings, as you can see. Uh, NT swivels, very important to stop your wire, your wire from kinking. Um, a packet of 13-0 ringed soys. 1-0 or number one power swivel. Heat shrink, 2.4 mil is ideal for what we're going to do. A pair of scissors, obviously, to cut the heat shrink. That's the mustard scissors. Um, our fish mate wire, nylon coated. I'm using clear. The reason I'm using clear is for the guys in the Eastern Cape that fish in very clean water, daytime. Um, obviously in Natal we prefer the black one which is our carbon coated. But I'm going to be using the silver one today and I will show you later on what we do to it to change its color if necessary. Um, just a simple knife to cut off the coating, the, the plastic coating of our nylon coated wire. A pair of pliers, side cutters, um, as we require. Um, Kingfisher, nylon, any nylon in particular, but I like to use Kingfisher 22, 28 kilo for our stopper knots. It's nice, it's soft, it's supple, and it holds nicely on the nylon coated wire. And a packet of beads. Um, colors up to you, I prefer orange, gives off more of a red color in clean water. Okay, to start, hey, I love this game. Let's just take everything apart. <clears throat> to start off, we take our nylon coated wire and we cut it, the length of it, and this is 200 pound just to let you know. Some guys like a little bit lighter, but 200 pound is most probably the best all round wire that you can use for raggies. You don't get bitten off. Well, very seldom do you get bitten off. Okay, so what do we do is we take the first bit, which is going to be our hook snooting part, if I can call it, and it's going to be 1.2 meters in length. I do it about 1.25 just for knots, but at the end of the day, 1.2. And I actually made some marks on the desk here. There we go. 1.2. Uh, side cutters. Okay, so that is for our hook snoot. Our back bite part, we make 1.6 meters in length, so we just do it a little bit longer, 1.65. Let's see if I can get it right. One point six five. Okay, so there we go. It's actually such a simple trace when you think of it. But to make it, it does take a bit of time and it depends how neat and tidy you want to be. Um, our 13-0 mustard suis. I need two of those. So you can stay behind. Okay, we're just going to move over to my vice for a second. Just to do a simple knot. Um, we're just going to go over there and do this. Okay guys, 13-0 ring soy, that's our mustard, um, very strong, long point on it which is very nice for raggies, curved in, okay, we're basically going to tie our knot, this is how it goes, it's a very simple knot, take your wire, work from the bottom up, wrap it around the shank and come back out the opposite side. See that? Very simple. Take our side cutters, our pliers actually, and what we do is we pull that loop over the top. Take our hands and we pull as hard as we can on both of them. Take your pliers and you just 
tweak the wire like that. That basically stops it from coming undone. Okay. Um, next, we're going to take our second wire, our second hook, stick it through the top of the eye, pull it all the way down. And we just measure it so it's a little bit longer than the second one. See that there? But in the opposite direction. Take your hand and hold the wire and the actual hook together. Take your left hand and what we do is we just start at the bottom going around five times. Two, three, four, five. I'm going to go six actually. And back through the top. Very important that you go through the top of it. Come back down. I then put my together lighter and we lightly melting the actual wire that we've got here. There we go. Simple as that. We're going to go back to our desk now. I'm just going to snip off this little piece of wire and I'm going to show you why we use the knife. Okay, there we go. So basically, that's what it looks like. I'm just going to take my side cutter, cut that off. So, as you can see, I've got my bottom hook tied, my second hook tied on. I've lightly melted the wire there so that that loop is not going to come undone. We're now going to measure 500 from there to over here. So I'm just going to do my measurements quickly. And that is about 500. So that far away, I'm going to tie with a piece of nylon a figure of eight. So very simply, get my scissors, take my kingfisher nylon. Just take a piece off. About 40 centimeters, 50 centimeters. And again, just get my measurement right, which would be about there. And now, what I'm going to do is a figure of eight. So, all I'm going to do is go around one, two, three, to form a figure of eight. Open it up nicely, and there it is. If you find that you haven't got it exactly where you want it to be, you can move the knot up and down. So once you've got your length right, push the knot together, and then obviously tighten. A little bit of lubrication there. And as simple as that, we just cut it off. So what we have here is just a figure of eight attached to the wire. Repeat process one again. And figure of eight. One, two, three times. Go around. Form your figure of eight. And again, pull top. Leaving a very small space between the figure of eight. Okay, so there we go, if I want to have a close up on it, there's my first figure of eight, a little gap, second figure of eight. And the reason you leave it is when you actually throw, say, an eight ounce sinker and you throw very hard, that might move. But I promise you the second one is not going to move. Take our heat shrink. We cut a small piece of heat shrink off, about that length. We then insert it all the way along. Over the actual two knots that we've done, the two figure of eight knots. Push it down so that the heat shrink is more on the left hand side over here. Just before the first knot, 
take our lighter or you can use steam it's up to you but I'm just going to use a lighter it's just quick and easy not under the direct heat or flame so move it quickly and there we go okay so now what's happening is the heat shrink is now pulled around the actual nylon you can see the the bump where the actual um, nylon was that indentation in the next knot and yeah it's cool enough now and you feel it actually goes quite hard okay so now we've basically got our stopper knot we're then going to take our bead so we'll do this quickly There, one on the left, one on the right, it's fine. And insert it from the top down. There's our first bead, which we're happy with. We're going to take our NT swivel. And the reason we use these NT swivels is that it's actually flanged on both sides. So what happens is when it runs down or the raggy goes off with it or the shark, whatever, swims off with it, it doesn't damage your wire causing those little pigtails. Um, it protects it quite nicely, they're reusable, they stay in the steel, they work extremely well. Have a look at it, very nice. Also the sand doesn't get stuck in them as easily as other swivels. So there we go. Take our second bead and attach that. Okay, now what we're going to do is, again, halfway between the two. So this was 1.2 meters when we started. 500 up from it is where we actually put our knot. We're now going to basically halve it, which would be about there. And we're going to make another knot. So let me just grab another piece of nylon. Another figure of eight knot. do that, that there we go okay there we go so what we're going to do now is just another figure of eight one two three times and because there's not going to be any load or any pressure on this knot we don't have to tie two we just make one because all it is is a stopper knot so this Okay, so there is our stopper knot. It basically stops the bead. Simple as that. We then again take a little bit of heat shrink, a much smaller piece than before. Small little piece of heat shrink, and we're just going to put that over the stopper knot. Run that down. Again, just take our lighter, and we move it up so it's almost in line with the actual knot, the heat shrink. down a bit with your fingers nice neat looks good there we go we're now going to take another longer piece of heat shrink too long another longer piece of heat shrink let's put it down there and we're going to take our heavy duty solid ring this size that I'm using is size 5, you can use size 6 if you want. I just like to keep it nice and small. Um, what we're going to have to do is go back to my vise over there, because we actually have to put, pull this knot very, very tight. So we're going to go back to our office on that side, and we're going to take this one as well. So let's go tie that knot once again at the vise. Okay, so basically what we've done is I've got my heat shrink attached over here, as you can see. I'm going to take my solid ring, attach it there, and I'm just going to tie a simple figure of eight knot. So we're going to go once, twice, 
Take it around and back through. Open it up and there's my figure of eight as you can see forming there. I'm just going to hook it on there quickly if you don't mind. I'm going to pull the knot tight like that with my side cutters. So you can see there's a figure of eight, it's pulling tight. I'm going to slide it all the way down until it gets to that solid ring there. A um, pair of round nose pliers. And I'm just going to stick it into the solid loop like that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull as tight as I can. So, just so it seats that knot properly. Here we go. Take out a little bit of the bend that you get in it. Lay the tag in, which is that little bit there, next to it. Take my side cutters. And I leave quite a bit of actual tag in there, just to make sure that the length is right. Take that, off and around. And what I do is I just slide it up to where it is. If you look at it properly, you can see where the little tag end is there and that comes to that section there. I'm now going to take my lighter and actually just melt that quickly. Okay, all I'm going to do now is take my lighter and uh, start melting or heating up the heat shrink. Take your fingers, wet them because the heat shrink does get a bit warm and just straighten the wire in the direction you want it to sit and that's it there done. So there you go. As you can see it's very nice, neat, the wire tag end sits next to the actual wire. Perfect, exactly how you want it to be. Now I'm going to take the 1.6 meter, 200 pound uh, nylon coated wire and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. It's going to be a figure of eight. So, form a figure of eight once, twice. There's your figure of eight. Okay. Just pull the knot tight, like that. Put a lubrication on it. And what we do is we just slide it down to that side. What I'm going to do now is pull as hard as I can to actually get the knot to seat properly. And the easiest way is actually just to stick it around your body. One, two. It's a good way to test your knot strength. Make sure that the knot's not going to part when the rag is actually rolling itself. Okay. Cut off the tag end. Just make sure it sits properly the way you want it to sit. Seat. Take another piece of heat shrink and again repeat the process. Just slide it all the way down to where the solid ring is. You then put it on here like this. And take your lighter. Just make sure the wire seats where you want it to seat. Again, right on top of each other and not around. That there is perfect. So if you have a look there, you can see where the two figure of eights are and the solid ring is. Stop a knot, bead all the way through. Now what we do is take another piece of heat shrink and slide it on and I'm going to get my power swivel, my 1-0 or number 1 power swivel. Okay guys, there's my 1-0 uh, power swivel. Just open that up quickly. Take that out. I've cut a lovely piece of heat shrink as well. As you can see, I'm going to slide it onto the wire. Okay, so here we go. 
We now slide the heat shrink down, take our power swivel, and we tie a figure of eight. Once, twice. There's our figure of eight forming. A pair of pliers, side cutters, whatever you can get your hands on. Pull your nylon coated wire knot figure of eight tight. Slide it all the way down. And then all we're going to do is just stick this in and pull it tight. Just move everything down. Okay, guys, I've just gone and pulled my figure of eight on my swivel tight. So what I'm going to do now is just quickly bend it so that the wires sit next to one another or the way I want it to be. And that is perfect. Again, I'm just going to cut the tag end off of the wire. Take my heat shrink and just slide it all the way up to where I want it to sit. Again, just making sure everything's sitting right. There we go. 2.4, like I say, fits over there 200 pound nicely. Take our lighter once again. There we go. And it's nice to actually make that heat shrink quite long on the swivel one. The reason being the actual clip that I'm going to put on needs something to sit against. And that whole heat shrink that we have here actually stiffens everything up here nicely. And that's why we also leave that little tag in quite long because it just stiffens everything up. Okay, I'm going to take my um, sinker clip. If I can get one out. There we go, okay. So, standard sinker clip, nothing fancy about it, as you can see. Only thing is it's got a swivel on it, so I'm just going to take all of the, the hardware off here. Okay, so you just take the swivel off. Swivel's off. I'm very happy with it. I'm now going to cut the clip to form another clip. That doesn't make sense, does it? Eh? Form a clip to form a clip. Okay, so that clip part is so away. That clip part is what I'm looking for. I then take my round nose pliers and just open it up. Okay, so I've got a lovely little clip there. Another little secret is if you actually take that clip and you just bend it back a bit, it'll keep it at 90 degrees. Uh, we take our side cutters and all I'm going to do is just move the wire back. So it opens up the eye of the actual clip, okay? Again, all I'm going to do is then take that and stick it into my um, 1.0 power swivel and close the clip up. Like that. I'm just going to take a pair of side cutters, or I'll just use my bars, and just tighten up the whole thing. So what it's done now is I've closed that eye nicely. Okay. And the clip with that bent back section actually sits nicely against the actual wire, as you can see there. Okay. So now this is now 2.8 meters. And how it works is that clip just goes on there your sinker trace which I'm going to attach now is going to go on there so basically how it works is very simple there's your clip there's your solid ring that attaches to that you've got 1.2 meters of uh, wire that you're going to be using so when you throw it backwards or let your rod go back for your pendulum cast it doesn't hook the water behind you at all 
compared to something that would be that long there. Okay, so it goes on like that, you throw it, it obviously hits the water, that unclips. Now you've got a huge long piece of wire so the raggy can't bite back on the actual trace. Um, let me just put a sink on and show you how the whole thing looks at the end of the day. Okay, so now I've got some uh, nylon, um, 8.0, 9.0, 1 mil, it's up to you. Uh, I know a lot of guys use 1 mil just because the reggie seems to bite the sinker off. I'm using 8.0 here. I'm just tying a figure of 8 onto it. Okay. So now what we do is we measure out how long we actually want it to be uh, with our dangle or our throw bait it's up to you as far as the length you want to go I'm going to cut it there take our uh, sinker clip and again just our figure of 8 onto the nylon there we go, cut that off and grab our cone sinker. Okay, basically we just grab our uh, cone sinker, take our clip, insert it onto our sinker. I like to open my sinker clips up a little bit. They just come off a lot easier. I then just take one of our uh, pre-made dangles, the medium. I'm going to take one of these out here quickly. Okay, so basically the dangle, the part that's got the heat shrink on goes through the first point of the first hook, which is your holding hook. So it basically looks like that. We then take our uh, sinker clip, and the sinker clip will go on there. Reverse everything around. So now that's basically how that trace looks. We then take our clip, and because it's very difficult to throw 2.8 meters of wire, we hook the holding clip on to that over there, and that's basically what you throw. It's as simple as that. Obviously, your leader is going to go attached to that part of it. And when it goes through the air, that actually flips back like that as it's traveling. And when it hits the water, the whole thing comes apart. It's as simple as that, guys. Very simple, very easy. And of course, because of the limited slide that we have, it can only go that far. So when the rag is actually biting back, it's pretty much halfway down your line. So this part of it here, even if he swam back to you, he's biting here, he doesn't get your leader in his mouth at any stage. It gives you a good 800 mils of wire that that raggy can't bite back on. Okay, very easy, very successful, I've got a lot of raggies on it, but that's it there. Simple as that. Guys, remember I was telling you about the bite back? Basically a bite back is when the reggae comes back on itself and actually bites. So there's your trace. The reggae will pick up the bait and he'll come towards you. So he's coming towards you, coming towards you. The stopper knot will now stop it from happening and it'll be dragging your sink along. But what's happening is the reggae is actually biting over here. It's biting, biting here, but he's actually biting your wire. So this whole trace basically stops what they call the bite back trace. Uh, stops where the regs are actually biting up your wire. Just to give you an example, I'll show you one here. This was a couple of days ago when I was at uh, one of my favorite reggae spots. And as you can see, the reggae actually had this trace that far down its throat and then when it obviously turned its head, when I hit him, he was biting back over there. And he actually bit all the way up to here. You can see over here where he got up to. And if I didn't have that bite back 
trace you would have bitten my leader off over here so basically this whole section was there if you can imagine that so you can see how far back that raggy actually bit on that trace okay so he had in his mouth he was ricking and plucking and doing this as he's shaking his head and just biting 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 if i didn't have my leader if i had a normal leader on he would have bitten me off with this he wouldn't have had a chance well he didn't have a chance because i got him out so just to give you an idea how that reggae actually bites back on the actual trace okay there we go simple as that guys that's a bite back trace okay just another little added bonus for those of you that fish in the eastern cape in crystal clean water you fish during the day and the reggies are around um let's take a piece of paper change the color of your wire is very simple what we do permanent marker we then take the permanent marker and rub it along the actual coating as you can see turn it over we do exactly the same on this side of it now we're changing the color of the wire from being a clear to a red the red is obviously there to imitate blood or it could also be the first color that disappears in the color spectrum so to give you a simple idea there we go we've just changed the color of our wire from being a silver to a blood color you can do the same with your hooks if you want All I'm doing is just coloring in the hook with a permanent marker and making it red. Simple as that. There we go. Now I've got a red hook with red wire. If you give it one minute, this will dry and you'll see it won't come out on your fingers anymore. It's permanently marked as a red hook or red wire just a little added bonus for you guys another thing that's very nice to do especially with raggies is to take the coating off and how we do that is to basically wrap it around here just take my vice quickly grab a knife preferably a blunt knife not something that you're going to use too often take your knife and you actually just peel the coating off okay okay now what that does what that by peeling that coating off what it does is if a reggie has got it in his teeth and you remember he's got those uh, sickle kind of shaped teeth is it runs easier through the teeth and the plastic doesn't build up and i'll give you an idea of what i'm talking about let me just grab this quickly as you can see here what's happened is the reg is added in his teeth and he's moved like that and he's pulled the coating down okay so you're just trying to prevent that from happening because you'll be fighting your fish he comes out to the side and he goes Whoop! because what's happening is that's actually stuck in his teeth now simple as that so you take the coating off it doesn't get stuck and so much easier as far as a hook set goes that's basically what you're trying to achieve guys taking the plastic off so that doesn't happen